Um, we did this presentation, uh, I think about 18 months ago, actually, up in Chadron, uh, before the Meet the Buyers conference that, that they had there. And um, we got a good response, and, and we thought people liked the structure of it, and so we thought we would um, do it again. So um, what, we're, what we're focusing on today is developing a pitch for, for government agencies, and really, how do you introduce yourself in about 45 seconds, which is at these events like Meet the Buyers and things, you do only have about that much time to, um, to introduce yourself, to, to talk about what it is you do and how it might um, work for, for, the, for, the government, for the contracting agent uh, that you're going to be talking to. So a lot of this information um, comes from uh, our, uh, Joshua Frank, who has presented with our group before. Um, he's from RSM Federal. Um, and he's a national, nationally recognized authority on government sales and business acceleration. So um, you can see his pertinence um, there, but just know that um, he's, he's somebody that, that we've, had, we've had present in the past um, and, again, have received good, good feedback about um, um, you know, kind of how to, how to make your approach as you're talking with a, with a government contracting agent. And so uh, we thought we would have this, have this event again to see how um, – uh, you, you know, and, and hopefully it's helpful to you as well. So um, the, we're going to go through this example. Um, and the other part is that the part I think that would be most helpful for everyone, uh, and I should have said this right up at the top, is um, if you're, you know, at a computer, uh, then, then all the better. Put up a, pull up a w whatever word processor um, of your choice uh, that you want to use if you, if you want to do that. Um, I prefer pen and paper. So that's how I would do some of these activities. But um, like I said before, we did this in a, kind of a um, an in-person setting, and I'm not, and it and it worked really well. Um, and we're we're going to see how it translates to to the virtual environment. So um, there there will be time to work, but I'm going to go through this example and talk through the important elements of it. Then I would like us to share different sections in the chat if we if we could, and just give us plenty of time so that by the end of this hour. Um, we have our 45 second introductory pit, uh, pitch ready to go. So um, that's what, what we thought would be the most useful rather than hear for an hour about what needs to go into a, into a 45 second pitch to actually use this time to then go through a good example and then build one ourselves. So I'm going to go through this example. This is a 45 second introduction that takes control of the conversation. So you can time me if you want, um, uh, but I'm, uh, I'll just kind of go through this here and then, then discuss the, the key elements in a second. So hello, we are in the business of streamlining and consolidating information and data across multiple geographically dispersed networks to increase the visibility, accuracy, and speed of access across the enterprise. On average, we save our clients 30% in operational expenses and more than a 45% savings in data integrity and database cleansing costs. We have provided these benefits to Monsanto, Blue Cross, and the US Army Corps of Engineers. Like most companies in our space, our website and marketing collateral list half a dozen products and services. But we have two core competencies that provide the most value to our customers, product or service A and B. Before I go into more detail, can I ask several questions to better help me understand your organization? Would that be okay? So the key elements there have been numbered. Um, <clears throat> but first we're gonna go over what really wasn't discussed. So on the previous slide, I talked about how this is a small business that's woman owned and veteran owned. But on the next slide, you'll notice um, that that really wasn't mentioned in the 45 second introduction. And uh, the reason this isn't recommended really is that um, you have excellent products and services, and that's um, something that you should be highlighting. That's what helps you communicate solid value. So um, you, those are the things that you need to lead with. The fact that you have, whether it's excellent customer service, what are those key attributes that you really want to highlight and talk about? And so that's really what you should open with. So communicate that value, the fact that you have excellent products or services, and then um, uh, an excellent track record in terms of um, delivering those products or services. So um, the government, in short, will buy from you because of your 
products and services, the fact that you communicated that value, and the fact that you have solid past performance and experience, and not because you are a small business or woman-owned or veteran-owned or something like that. So that status is a balancing differentiator is, is the terminology used. So to just say all things being equal, price, uh, reliability, what are the, the different attributes that, that could be um, that, that the contracting officer is making their purchase decision based upon, um, you know, uh, timeliness of the bid or, or what have you. What are, the, what, what are the different traits that they're deciding upon? Um, so you, you already have that uh, perceived value. And then um, that, that socioeconomic status may make the difference between them going with you or another. So it's certainly worth noting and talking about. But um, in terms of getting your foot in the door, in terms of getting to the, that ultimate decision come, falling down in your favor, um, you really should talk more about, again, the excellent products or services, um, st stating that value clearly, and then um, uh, uh, past performance or, or history of success. So um, uh, again, it is what maybe um, breaks things in your favor, or you know, break, um, uh, tips the scales in you in your favor. Um, but that's you know, kind of at the end of the purchase decision, and not and we're at the very beginning of it. So. Uh, the point of this 45 minute or 45 second, wow, 45 second introduction is more about getting a 30 minute meeting, which is, is, is the goal. So we're trying to build, use those four elements that were exemplified previously and getting those four elements into a very clear statement of what that next follow on action is. So again, I'll go through go through the example. I think I did come in at about um, 45 seconds, uh, 60 seconds or so, but we'll, but we'll do it again. And the other thing is that this will come off as a little formulaic, but um, the point is that these elements should be included, but you should also make it your own. So there are certain statements here that are not exactly how I would say them. Um, I think if you look in, in the, the fourth line there, um, can I ask several questions to better help me understand your organization. Um, and I just, as a, it's hard to read that. I mean, I, I think I would more, more likely say, can I ask several questions to help me understand your organization better? I, I think I would, I would reword that. Um, so, you know, there are certain things just like little linguistic things, I guess, or semantic um, or word choice or whatever that, um, that you're going to have to do to, um, to, to make, to make your pitch feel like, feel natural and that it really flows uh, for you. But um, in, in general, it should, it should include these elements and we'll, and we'll go through each, what each of these elements are and, and what needs to, what you need to highlight in each section. Um, so here we go, we'll, we'll walk through it again, 45 seconds. Um, so one, right off the bat, we're in the business of streamlining and consolidating information and data across multiple geographically dispersed networks to increase the visibility, accuracy, and speed of access across the enterprise. On average, we save our clients 30% in operational expenses and more than a 45% savings in data integrity and database cleansing costs. And I think I'm just going to stop right there after, after that first section. And hopefully, and, and if you'd put it in the chat, some of the things that you're, you're recognizing is that there's you know, a very clear kind of before and after where there's, a, there's an activity that your company does. Um, in, this case, in this example, streamlining and consolidating information and data across multiple geographically dispersed networks, which applies to a lot of, a lot of businesses these days, multiple geographically dispersed networks with so many people working from home. So that, that there, it establishes relevance and it's compelling. You're streamlining and consolidating information so you're in that first sentence establishing the activity that you do and to increase or, you know, in some cases, maybe you decrease, you know, labor or costs or something like that. But um, that to increase is, is an operative verb there where um, uh, something is happening. You know, the, so this is the, the current state and then there is a change and the change does what? It increases the visibility accuracy and speed of access across the enterprise. So we've got multiple 
geographically dispersed networks, and we're increasing something across this entire system. So that sounds compelling to me. So to just go for something that's compelling and relevant and actionable, and then this last statement really focuses on something very specific. To save our clients 30% in operational expenses, I think it's important to put on average because a, a 30% savings in operational expenses is pretty significant. So um, I think it's probably important to say something that ensures that that that, that remains true um, so that you don't have a, a, a customer who's expecting right off the top 30% in operational expense savings right away. And more than a 45% savings in data integrity and database cleansing costs. Now, if it's me, um, I'm not a contracting officer for information for IT services, so maybe I, I don't quite understand um, the 45% savings in data integrity and database cleansing costs. So potentially that needs to be defined better, but that would also need to be tailored for your audience. If you're talking, if you're an IT person or an inf information security person talking to somebody else, then that probably is very clear. Um, okay, so then, so so that's the the section there. So um, it's not really getting into the how. If you've noticed, it's it's a what. Um, what is the the current state of things? Then it's identifying a change, and then what does that change lead to, result in, and then something very specific. Uh, so that's how that that one should be that one section be, should be structured. Okay, then, then we'll move on to number two, just through this example. We have provided these benefits to Monsanto, Blue Cross, and the US Army Corps of Engineers. So this one should be kind of the, the easiest part to write. Um, in, uh, if you have you know, past customers or, or a documented history of success, um, whether they're you know, private industry or um, public entities that you are um, hoping to contract with, um, uh, you know, you, what you're, saying is that, that you have delivered successfully on contracts to these other organizations. And that may not be the case in, in absolutely every um, company that's, that's on the call now, um, in which case, you know, maybe you focus more on your uh, key personnel. Um, uh, you might need to focus on the fact that your owner has X number of years in a relevant industry or that uh, the combined years of experience of the team equal you know, something within, uh, you know, 50 years within uh, teleservices or, or something like that. Um, but uh, just some way that, do that documents a history of success um, in working in a relevant industry area. <clears throat> so uh, then number three, like most companies in our space, and I think this is important to acknowledge the alternatives that are available. Um, you know, if it's workforce management or workforce optimization or something, there are there is software that exists that that does that. Even if it's just a Google um, uh, Google Doc or something that <laughs> uh, a Google Sheet that where you where you track people's hours and things. Uh, but th that's a free alternative that exists. So you kind of need to acknowledge that yes, uh, there are existing solutions out there. Th this is something. Um, uh, there are other companies in our space who do something like this. Um, our, and then our website and marketing collateral list half a dozen products and services. So we can do quite a few things. Um, but then to really uh, home in on the fact that we have two core competencies that we have, we have noticed provide the most value to our customers. And then to, then to name those and make sure that that's very clear by the end of this third paragraph here. And then four is your ask. But before I go into more detail, can I ask several questions to better help me understand your organization? Would that be okay? Um, maybe you have a more specific one. You would like to, you know, would it be possible to set up a 30 minute meeting with you and other key stakeholders within the organization to talk more about this, um, uh, about our solution or what we do? So uh, again, that's, just, that's just that, that example. And so then working through this 45 second introduction, all four sections, you start with the value one. And to return to our example, that's where we're saying, what is the current state? What it is that you do? What is the change? In this case, it's to increase. And then to be able to specify something, um, some specific number 
of um, either whether that's percentage or or what have you what have you some cost savings um, that you have noticed from your other clients your other um, um, your other contracts that you work on so so value is is that first one just start right away with what is the excellent product or service to to the point um, that was previously stated what is the excellent product or service um, that you deliver um, to to the customers that you currently have then number two gets into the proof is to say well we, we deliver this excellent product or service to our existing customers oh and by the way here are those customers that we currently serve. So um, that should be uh, a fairly straight, straightforward, just a sentence, pretty quick little sentence right there. So you go value and then proof. And so that, that's gonna lend to your credibility of the claim that you just made. I mean, you, you made a pretty bold claim uh, that there's a 30% operational expense savings that, that your system can deliver. Um, that's pretty significant and i think it might cause someone to say well you had me and then i kind of started to ask questions um about that is are you are you serious 30 percent in operational expenses are saved well just ask monsanto or the u.s army corps of engineers so that's where you're there's a potential rebuttal um that's coming and you're offering them proof right away <clears throat> number three is that you're going to make equal and then you're going to differentiate your service. So, um, you know, you're a you're a small business in many cases, and um, you're up against, at least in this case, maybe um, you know Microsoft or Amazon Web Services or something like that. So you need to acknowledge the fact that these alternatives are out there and then exist. And so that's also realistic. You're saying that that's a real thing that 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 happens, but that you're different for the following ways. Yes, you can do half a dozen things but you really focus on these two problems and you solve these problems very well and then you um then the fourth item then is to just take control what is that next action step could i get your contact information it might, you know might be the easiest um the easiest ask at a at an event like the meet the buyers um where there are uh, business cards being, flying around like crazy um maybe something we've we've forgotten about but yeah to you know could I have your contact information? Would it be okay if I follow up with you within, follow up with you within the next week to talk further about this? Or you know what what? And then um, then I, uh, identifying what your steps will go are going to be too. Would it be okay for me to send um, some sales materials or, or brochures your way and um, and set up an appointment? So um, just to walk through that again, value is that first item, then proof. Then three is you're going to make equal and differentiate. So this is kind of a continuation of that proof section and then take control um, and then get out. Um, so that's um, that, that first um, segment, the, the one through one, two, three, four um, is really where these conversations begin. Uh, later on, uh, if you look at this slide, there's a kind of a, there are four elements and you slip in the, the fourth paragraph there. Uh, the first three remain the same. And this is where you can kind of name drop a little bit, I suppose. You've already had some initial conversations. You used your practice one through four, 45 second introduction. Um, and you've, you've made some contacts. You have a, a government program manager at Health and Human Services in this example where you've already had that 30 minute meeting and gotten some feedback. And now you work that into your pitch in follow-up conversations. So we've worked with Monsanto, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, US Army Corps of Engineers, that's your two. And then you kind of move into four and you're saying, all right, well, we don't have a contract with Health and Human Services yet, but we have spoken with a, you know, a government program manager that's kind of higher level and believe that based on these discussions, we can help your team be more competitive, which sounds, I mean, strongly implies that you have a, a mandate from, uh, from on high, from, from their, from their uh, bosses or, or higher ups, that um, this, having this discussion about potential cost savings or 30% reduction in operational expenses um, 
would be um, would be beneficial for them to have. So uh, that's kind of step two when when there's a 45 second introduction, um, uh, volume two that that comes out. But it, it's important to know that when when the, when you begin to have these conversations and it feels like maybe some some traction is being gained, then before your ask, uh, before your final um, take control statement, you can kind of slip in the fact that there are other conversations happening that you've at this even same event, really, you have met with other people um, uh, to uh, and, uh, and and gotten some positive indications that uh, uh, that you should continue or that that they they should meet with you to talk more about this. So again, it's just kind of your um, speaking to your credibility. So um, that is the structure, um, the 45 second introduction that takes control. So um, yes, this is a small business. Yes, this company, this small business is woman owned and veteran owned, but it's really focusing on the value that you are trying to communicate, um, the excellent products and services that you offer. And it shouldn't just be a description of, you know, we sell, uh, uh, I don't know, personal protective equipment, you know, PPE or something. Maybe what really differentiates you is not so much the PPE um, that's being sold or what have you. It's the, um, the training uh, that goes along with it or the uh, customer service or something like that. Maybe that's what your company or your business really, really focuses on. And that's the part that makes, that makes the difference. So it's not so much about um, the PPE. It's the fact that their employees wear it correctly and therefore causes a um, a reduction in uh, you know people being sick or you know uh, uh, days that people are are out sick because the PPE is actually being worn correctly or something like that so it's not necessarily the fact that your product or services itself you know the thing you sell is maybe so different but it's the the business operations the the business activities that surround that concept um, that may be what your differentiator is. And so making sure that that's what's being articulated in, in your value. So what we're going to do, because that's how I promised at the top, is that we would leave this hour with our 45 second pitch, um, is we're gonna take five to seven minutes to write each section of then your pitch. And so we're going to start with the value. So this may in fact be the, the hardest part to do, but I'm gonna keep the, the section up there. And so I want you to get out your pen or if you feel more comfortable typing, we're in a virtual environment. So either of those options are, are open to you. And I want you to write this. And if you have your, even can pull up a capability statement perhaps that you've worked on in the past, but to really articulate what it is that value. And I would focus on, again, that, that first sentence is what is it that that you do that you do very well and so what is that activity what is that change whether it's to increase sales or to decrease x and then what is the the future state that you help a company to achieve so what is it what's that activity that you do what is that change word um, maybe what you really do is is help people when everything else is changing to stay the same, that their, their costs don't go up or, or don't decrease. So what is that operative verb that you do? And then what is that future state that you help them to achieve? And then, so that would be just that first sentence is the statement of value. And then if you can put some numbers on that too, is then that second sentence. So let's take five minutes now to write our value statement for this 45 second introduction. So let's go till 333, 333, or 233, sorry. If you have questions too, put them in the chat or the question box and we'll take those. Um, if you want, you could uh, use the raise hand function as well mm -hmm. and I can unmute your microphone if you would rather just talk your question. We can do that too, um, but yes. Take five minutes right now.
Okay. So um, just like um, Daniel said, if anyone feels um, that they want to share theirs, even in the um, either in the chat, would be great. Or we can always unmute you too if uh, someone wants to raise their hand and say that they uh, want to share their their section one there. Um, You don't have to, but okay. So um, seeing none, we'll just assume that everybody wants to do this after um, section two, which is fine. I um, let's. I don't think we need as much time for this. I think just th uh, three minutes on this one actually. So we'll we'll go with two thirty three. But to just identify who. Um, some customers you feel comfortable kind of um, name dropping or, or if that's not something that you um, feel like you can share with um, with a group as you're kind of um, uh, talking through uh, then to just say you know uh, maybe industry groups or something like that you know uh, you, you have uh, you have customers within these industry groups or, or these market segments or something like that so if you you don't always have to just share share a company name or something like that you can just um, you could be a little bit more generic if you if you needed to um, or in, in that case also you could talk about the the credentials the background of, of key personnel key employees so let's take three minutes now so we'll go with 237 and we'll write that that second section for your pitch Okay, so now I just want you to take a minute right now um, and just uh, if we've been writing, uh, whether it's on, uh, on a word processor or just little notes to yourself, um, but just talk it, talk it through. So make sure that it, that it flows and that it, that it uh, rolls off the tongue because if it's, if it's something kind of uh, strangely worded, um, I know that I do that. I, I, I write very differently. Uh, than the way I talk, uh, than the way I speak. And so if I've, I've written something, um, you know, I might not naturally say it that way. And so it's going to be hard in a meet the buyers kind of situation for me to, uh, to say that, to rattle that off. So um, even if it's maybe less technically precise or less technically correct that way, um, whether it's grammatical or not, just make sure that the way you're talking through it uh, these first two sections feel feel right feel feel natural as you're kind of um, 
as you're working through working through these statements. So, um, so that's fine. I mean, I, I won't hear, but if as we're kind of moving into the next section, if you just want to, you know, kind of time yourself, this, this section so far should take, you know, 20 seconds ish. Um, so make sure that, uh, it, that that it's not too long and that it, that it really flows and it feels feels good. So. With that, we'll move on to the third section, which is, as we've mentioned before, you're where you're going to make equal and then differentiate. And this part can be maybe the hardest one to write. So we will we will give ourselves five minutes here, um, five yeah five minutes here, just to make sure that you acknowledge the competition, what other what other major big businesses do in this space, and then also what other small business competitors um, are able to do. And then what are the two things that you really focus on, your two core competencies that really set you apart? So again, we'll do, we'll do five minutes here so that you can really narrow down what it is you maybe spoke about in the first section more broadly, um, and then to really specify two core competencies um, that you believe provide the most value to, your, to those customers that you just name dropped in the section before. So, um, so we'll do five minutes here, and it should be 2.44.
Okay, and then we're just going to do three minutes on this last section here. Um, uh, and I, I guess, uh, is to try and define something that is an appropriate next step for next step for you. Whether that's sharing more information, maybe you just want contact information, or um, uh, maybe you'd like to set up a, a 30 minute meeting with um, that's a, maybe kind of a big ask, you know, a, a, a meeting with uh, with that contracting officer and any other relevant stakeholders or something within the organization. Uh, so, you know, you, you determine what your uh, what your next level of engagement would be. But then to just really articulate in this fourth section here, um, a very specific action item and then, you know, that request about whether or not that would be okay. So let's do just three minutes here about you with you determining what what that should be. Okay, so I gave an extra minute because I, I talk a little too much, which you might have noticed. Um, so, um, the last step here is to just string each section together, and um, I and I want you to to well, I'll I'll time you actually. We'll we'll do forty five seconds, um, but uh, not right away. So the first thing that I that I want you to do is to just Take a minute now, uh, no one else on the call can hear you, um, to just talk through all four sections. Put them, string them together, um, and it should flow. It should feel kind of natural as though you're able to talk through, um, you know, as though you're able to talk through um, each of the sections, one mo moves naturally into the next one. So, so do that now uh, to just talk through all four sections there.
Okay, so that was a minute. Um, if it took, you know, a little bit longer than that, um, then uh, what are the sections that might, you know, where where we're taking a little bit uh, too much time? Did we get, uh, especially, I think there's a tendency in that first section to talk a little bit too much about value, and you really should be articulating what exactly, what specifically um, is your value, and then those very demonstrable benefits that, that the contracting officer would have working with your organization. So uh, one, uh, that, that section one can sometimes get a little bit too long. Um, so for, for value, um, the proof is pretty short and sweet. And um, I think the make equal then differentiate, sometimes that can get a little bogged down too. And what we're really doing is just trying to talk about the what. What, what are you doing? What's that operative one word, increase, decrease, Stay the same. What's that change word that you that you've got up there, up top? And then what is that value or benefit that you're able to specify um, in that first section? So if it if it takes too much time, I could I think anticipate that it maybe is too much in the in the value section. And so then that's something that could be reworked or tried to pare down. If it takes less time, if you if you went through that really quickly, then can you work in any additional pieces? Is there um, um, a potential teaming partner or an additional proof that you could talk to. Maybe instead of um, just listing the companies that are your clients, you could also add a little bit of biographical information or some information about yourself and your history working within the industry. So that's really um, uh, what what I would say there is to just, you know, try and, and it's not going to be exact. I mean, a 45 seconds is a, is a good amount of time to to aim for, but if it's 45 Point five seconds or 47 seconds, um, you know, no one's going to dock you on that. I don't know that anyone in their, in their life would recognize that, oh my gosh, they're, they're, um, they're, they talked for 45 seconds instead of 45. And so I got a, a vamoose. So um, 45 seconds is, is just a, is just a guideline and it should feel, it should flow um, when someone uh, walks or, you know, goes around on a, on a zoom call and has everybody introduce themselves and they say, give yourselves a minute to introduce yourself and what you do, then you've got, you don't need a minute. You've got 45 seconds where you're really very clearly able to articulate your value, substantiate that with proof, um, make yourself equal and differentiate yourselves from the competition, and then even have that ask worked in there. And it's that ask that'll change um, as you, you know, talk to other people where, you know, it's like, I want to know how my system could work with Department of Homeland Security as opposed to HHS for example. And so then um, it's, it's really that ask that, that might change as well as the, the perceived value um, to each agency. Um, but your proof should more or less stay the same regardless of which uh, contracting officer you would be talking with or engaging with. Um, uh, uh, the proof and then the make equal and the differentiate uh, because your, uh, your competitors are uh, largely you know, going to be fairly static. So so the two and three really should stay pretty solid um, and about the same as as you talk with different uh, with different agencies or, or different programming officers and things like that. You might just need to tailor um, the value because the perceived values are going to differ from agency to agency and programming and an officer to and a contracting officer to contracting officer as well as then the ask that you that, that you're desiring um, from them. So um, uh, if someone uh, wants to raise their hand and and share, um, I think we should get comfortable with with uh, sharing your your 45 second pitch. Uh, but but the the whole point of this was that you have crafted a 45 second pitch so that when you do attend these events, whether they're meet the buyers, whether it's a industry spotlight or something or, or some other event that that Daniel's putting together for the um, the the PTAC. Uh, group that as you go around and introduce yourselves, you have this slick 45 second introductory piece um, that gives a very clear indication of, of who you are and what you do and why that's different and why someone would be interested in talking with you as opposed to contracting with anybody else in the entire world. So um, with that, I, I hope you found this last 54 minutes useful. Um, I hope that it was tailored to what exactly you need. Um, so that you feel comfort comfortable and confident with um, with how it is that you're communicating 
what it is you do, and that it's helping you to then um, secure government contracts as you have uh, more and more of these conversations um, moving forward. So thanks so much for your time today. Again, I hope it was helpful and um, have a good rest of your afternoon.